Welcome back, climatologists. This is lesson 10 of Earth's Changing Climate. This is a lesson for sixth grade scientists. And I love lesson 10, just like I love lesson nine, because it's all about solutions. The title for this lesson is Climate Change Solutions. And today we're gonna to look at three additional solutions that can help us with the problem of climate change. So for this lesson to be successful, if you have someone to talk to and somewhere to write down your ideas, that will help. And we're going to be looking at the Earth Changing Climate Sim and reading an article called Climate Change Solutions, which we started in lesson nine. We're just going to finish it up. So the investigation question that we're trying to answer is what can be done to stop the carbon dioxide and methane in Earth's atmosphere from increasing? And we began looking at this in lesson nine. And during that lesson, we read an email from Irene Lee. She's the head climatologist at the World Climate Institute. And we've been working with them to try to understand what's causing the ice on our planet to melt, as well as helping them educate the public so that everyone can understand what's causing climate change and some solutions that can help solve it. So let's take a look at the two main ways that we can um, work on climate change. The first one is stop making so much carbon dioxide and methane. And then the second one is find ways to pull it out of the atmosphere now that it's there. So during lesson nine, we looked at two solutions, both of which were about just making less carbon dioxide, either using solar power or bicycles and transit to get around. So today in lesson 10, we will be looking at three new ideas of ways that we can reduce the effect of climate change on our planet. So the first one is about capturing methane from cows and then also capturing carbon dioxide at power plants. And then the last one is about something called reforestation. And you can see that word forest in the middle of that big word. And reforestation is a word that just talks about planting trees and having new forests grow where they've been cut down in the past. And we'll talk about how that can help with climate change too. So to get a copy of the article, you can do two things. You can either go to the Seattle Schools Science Department website, which is seattleschools.org slash academics slash curriculum slash science. And if you scroll all the way down until you get to middle school, sixth grade, find lesson nine of the Earth Changing Climate Unit. And in lesson nine, in that packet, I've put the article that you can read. Okay, so you can also go on to your Amplify account if you're a sixth grader in Seattle schools. And you do that by going on to the um, seattleschools.org, clicking on Clever. And once that pops up, choose the app for Amplify. And then you can open up your own account. And once you're there, open up the menu and go to the library. And when you do that, you will see an article that looks just like this. So here's where we were. Let me scroll to the top. This is called Climate Change Solutions. And we read the beginning part, which is the problem, too much carbon dioxide and methane. And then we read through some possible solutions. The first one was solar power. And then we talked about bikes and transit. So if you watched the lesson nine video and participated in that lesson, then you've read these. And if you didn't get a chance to look at lesson nine, then maybe go back and read those sections of the article because they're pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to start with a brand new solution. And this one is called capturing methane from cows. So I'll read through it and then we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. Okay. Look at those cute cows. The caption here says, cows produce a lot of methane, which stops energy from leaving the Earth's system and causes the planet to warm. Cows are very good at getting energy from plants, but the microorganisms that live in their digestive systems and help them eat grass also produce a lot of methane. And that methane has to get out somehow. In this case, it leaves the cow's bodies through burps and farts. In one year, a cow puts out methane in about the same amount as a car puts out carbon dioxide. To reduce the amount of methane cows produced, some scientists are working on inventing ways for cows to produce less gas when they digest their food. Some are trying to find out whether different diets for cows might help them put out less gas. Others are trying to change the way microorganisms in the cow's digestive system process food. If the microorganisms produce less methane, so will the cows. 
Another solution would be to eat less beef. If humans ate less meat that comes from cows, farmers would raise fewer cows and there would be less methane in the atmosphere. That's also true for dairy, not just eating less beef. There um, are lots of dairy products like yogurt and ice cream, and those all come from milk that come from cows. So the next section is about capturing carbon dioxide at power plants. So here's a picture of a power plant, and it says most of the electrical energy we use in our homes, schools, and businesses comes from power plants that burn fuel. We put carbon dioxide into the atmosphere by using electrical devices like lights, phones, and computers. Why is that? Phones and light bulbs don't burn any fuel. They run on electrical energy. However, that electrical energy had to come from somewhere. It traveled through power lines from a power plant. Most power plants generate electricity by burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, or natural gas. Burning those fossil fuels well, it doesn't say fossils, but burning those fuels sends carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Here is a picture of a big power line, and it says big power lines like these carry electrical energy from power plants to places where it is needed. For now, millions of people rely on power plants for electricity, and those power plants nearly always release carbon dioxide. What if we could stop that carbon dioxide from reaching the atmosphere? Some power plants use complicated processes to capture the carbon dioxide produced by burning fuel and store it deep underground. Capturing carbon dioxide keeps it out of the atmosphere, which helps stop the planet from warming as quickly. However, capturing carbon dioxide is expensive and we don't know what the long-term effects might be of burying huge amounts of carbon dioxide underground. So here's a picture that shows um, a power plant, and then there's something called carbon dioxide capture, where this gas is captured from the atmosphere and then buried underground into a pocket. At some power plants, carbon dioxide is buried deep in the ground to keep it from reaching the atmosphere. So although this does prevent the problem of carbon dioxide getting up into Earth's atmosphere, like the article is saying, we're not sure what the long-term effects of that would be. Okay, the last solution we're going to read about is something called reforestation, and under this caption it says planting trees or reforestation is one way to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. To reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, we can use less energy and store our carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide before it reaches the atmosphere, or we can rely on a natural process to absorb carbon dioxide from the air. That natural process involves trees and other plants. All plants take in carbon dioxide, use it to make food for themselves, and release oxygen. The more plants there are in the world, the more carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere. One reason there is so much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere today is that humans have cut down many of the trees on Earth and used them to build buildings and make paper or other materials. There are millions fewer trees on Earth than there once were, which means there is less carbon dioxide being taken in. One way of solving the problem of too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is reforestation, or planting trees. Many tree planting projects are located in places where people cut down forests in the past. By replacing trees that have been removed and planting new trees, even in places where they never grew before, People can cause the world's forests to take in more carbon dioxide. Reforestation also creates forest habitat, benefiting many kinds of animals and plants that live in forests. Okay, that's the end of this article. Let's go back to our notes page and let's talk about the three different solutions that we heard of. And I'm going to add a little bit more to the methane one. So in this first one, we read about capturing carbon dioxide at power plants. And the second one we read about is cows that produce lots of methane and that stops the energy from leaving the Earth's system and causes the planet to warm. And this picture is pretty comical, so um, I thought that was fun to add. Okay, now the next one is also about methane. The article didn't have this, but I thought you would be interested in learning about a different solution. So landfills also produce methane. So let's read through this list. Trash decomposes, or rots, in landfills, creating methane gas. Methane rises to the top of the landfill and is collected in pipes. 
that methane is burned to produce heat or generate electricity. So you can see here that there's trash down here and then there is this kind of like barrier over it so that the methane can't escape and then that gas is captured. Okay, the final solution we read about is reforestation. So planting trees or reforestation is one way to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So these are the different solutions that can help with climate change. And so we read the first two in lesson nine, and then we looked at these last three or four, if you count the landfill ones. And what I'd like us to do now is to actually open up the Earth's Changing Climate Sim and using a table like this or another way to keep track of notes, I want you to create a way that you can model that climate change solution and see how much energy is absorbed by the Earth's system, what happens to the amount of ice, see if one solution is enough to solve the problem or if you think multiple solutions should be used at the same time. And let's really focus on the positive solutions that we can do about climate change. And then when, when we're done, we'll take some time to think about how we can communicate these ideas to our community so that other people can learn about solutions, so that it's not just bad news about climate change, but that there's something we can actually do to help solve the problem. Okay, I've just opened the sim in Amplify. And if you were doing lesson nine with us last time, then you've already done a little bit of modeling and have some ideas of what to do. But if this is your first time, then let me show you something cool. If you click on the menu in the Amplify Sim and then open human activities, you can actually use this to model some of the solutions. So the first one we want to model is the gas capture. So if we look here, we can see the combustion per person and the livestock per person are really about reducing the amount of gas that goes in the atmosphere. But for lesson 10, we want to focus on pulling that gas out of the atmosphere. And so if we look down here, we can see that there is something called forest cover and gas capture. And so right now they're both set to low, but if you increase the forest cover, you can see that the sim on the bottom, watch this surface, it changes from a lot of areas that have been clear cut. And then if we actually plant some more trees, we can see that it goes to high. And then um, I'll reset that. And for gas capture, we can do high, medium, low, or none. And right now it's set to low. And if you, if you look here, you can see it's a little sort of a green funnel shape that pops up and that represents um, a little picture of, of gas being captured from the atmosphere. Okay, so using the sim, come up with a way that you can model it and um, explore it and then come back for the end of the video. If you have, um, if you're not able to get on Amplified, that's fine, just stay here and let's do this together. So let's explore gas capture first since I already have it set to high. And the sim has us capturing all the different gases in the atmosphere, carbon dioxide, and the sim has this set to capture both methane and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So before we do that, we want to just leave it at low and allow all the human activities that are happening on the surface just to reach um, equilibrium. So typically that takes about 20 counts. And so I'm going to hit play and increase that time to four and then watch the time over here. And when it gets to 20, I will pause it. Okay, close enough. And then I'm going to look at the graph and I can see that, yep, just like we would expect, the human activities on the surface have, um, let's change that to there, have increased the amount of methane in the, the turquoise color and the carbon dioxide in the gray. So then what I'm going to do now is come back here and I'm going to increase the amount of gas captured a high and I'll go back to the graph so I can see this happening. And I'm going to go ahead and hit play and we'll let it go to about 40 count. I think I'll go to 50 just because I went a little bit long. Okay, I can't tell what the timer is. There we go, 60, that's good. So if we come here, oh, the time's right here. I could have just looked there. Um, I can see that when um, the gas started getting captured here, you can see that this is where I put in the gas capture. So if I move it back to here, that's where I inserted 
increasing the amount of gas capture there. And then over time, um, the amount of, of, of gas in the atmosphere started to go down. And um, in the turquoise one, the gray one, it just kind of leveled off. I wonder if I let it run a little longer, what will happen? I can see it seems to be affecting the methane more than the carbon dioxide. So it looks like gas capture seems to work better for methane than it does for carbon dioxide. So I'll go ahead and now find out what happened to the temperature. We can see that it was increasing, and then once I did the gas capture here, it did level off a little bit, and it was increasing, but not quite enough. So I think what this tells us is that one solution to climate change might not be enough. We might need to combine them. Okay, so let's go ahead and reset this, and then I'm going to go back to human, oh, I'm already on human activity. I'm going to let this run for a count of about 20 just to have um, equilibrium reach. We can see the ice is starting to melt. The surface of the earth is glowing more yellow. That indicates that more energy is observed, absorbed. And I'm going to increase the forest cover at this um, on this test. And I'll hit play, let it run until it reaches about 60. Okay, so if I come down here, and this is where we increase the amount of forest cover. And I can see that the, the line has continued to increase. Let's go to carbon dioxide because um, trees interact with carbon dioxide gas, not methane. And I can see that the carbon dioxide was increasing really significantly. And then when I added more trees, um, it did start to fluctuate more. It, it doesn't seem to be quite as an intense of a, um, a climb. Maybe it was a little too late. Maybe if we had added a little earlier, why don't we go back and try that? I'm going to reset this and then I'm going to try not letting it run and just say like, what if we increase the forest cover with all these people still here? And I hit play. So the humans are doing their things, but the trees are everywhere. Keep an eye on the ice. It's just started to melt. Um, the surface is glowing more. The energy is increasing. The temperature is increasing. Okay, we'll stop there. If we go to here, we can see um, the carbon dioxide has continued to increase, but not at a rate quite as high as when um, it was working before. So that's interesting. Okay, I think what we can try now is let's try a couple different solutions. So let's reset this. Um, oops, yes. Let's let it run for about 20 seconds. So before human activity started, the ice was right about here. So if we could get the ice to go back to about there, um, that would be a good way to show that we can um, reverse climate change. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's plant a bunch of trees and let's also capture as much gas from the atmosphere as we can. So now we've got double things going, we've got forest cover and gas capture. But let's also, um, let's also look at combustion per person. Right now it's set to medium. And if, um, if we all did a little bit, we could say to low, but this combustion per person is not just talking about cars on the road. It's talking about factories that are producing materials. It's talking about jets and shipping containers that use combustion to get around the planet. So there's a lot of things that that would entail. And then let's also reduce the amount of livestock per person. So we're not getting rid of all the livestock and we're not getting rid of all the combustion. We're just moving it to low because that's more realistic of what we could do. We don't want to mess with the population because we don't want to kill anyone for this to work. We want to see if we can sustainably use our planet with the number of people that we have. So if I hit play, um, what we want is to see if we can get the ice to come back to about here. If I let it, oh look, the ice is returning. Okay, that is a very hopeful sign. So now we've got um, a lot of energy being pulled out of the atmosphere, maybe a, a touch too much at this point. <laughs> Some of those cars and people are getting covered in ice. Okay, let's pause this and let's take a look at the graph. Okay, pause and graph. 
So we saw that before the, when the sim was running at, let's move this back down to the beginning. So when we first started here, this is where we did all the activities. I'll put this all up here so you can see that. Um, you can see that, let's, let's just look at surface ice and temperature so it's not too crazy for now. Um, about here is where we made the changes. We reduced the amount of livestock and increased trees and all of that. And at that point, there was still quite a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But then as some of those things started to get captured and extra wasn't continuing to get put into the Earth's atmosphere, that um, we were able to reverse this. And so um, maybe what we just have to do is figure out what is the right amount of things that we can do. So then the ice began to return. And right about here is where um, that's about where we reached equilibrium with where we started. And then we were pulling out so much methane and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that um, the Earth started to go into snowball Earth mode. So we wouldn't want that to happen. But it's pretty cool to see that with some changes, we can make a difference. Okay, think about how you could communicate this with your community. And um, let's come back together with everyone and see uh, some of our ideas about that. Okay, welcome back climatologists from your sim exploration. I hope you have lots of observations and I hope you tried combining a few different solutions to see if we could really reverse climate change and see how we can return the ice that's melting on our planet back to um, the, the level where we can reach equilibrium. So the last thing that we just wanna talk about now is how can we communicate this with our community? So in lesson 11 and 12, we're going to look at ways that we can take what we've learned and put it into um, a blog post that we can send out to our community through the World Climate Institute. And we'll work with Irene Lee to be able to publish those. And it'll be a way for you to take all of the things that you figured out during this unit and, and have it turn into an action item for, for yourself, for your family, and for your community. And although the blog itself is fictional, what you write for that blog is not. And the changes that you can make in your community are real. Okay, see you next time.